What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 5 NHL 24 Salt Lake City Dragons Expansion Mode Series. As always guys, thank you so much for supporting the last episode. If you could also leave a thumbs up on this one, I'd really appreciate it. We're currently 6-1 in the preseason, the friend year there has 10 points in 7 games. If you guys missed the last episode, again, no Stanley Cup. And we reached the halfway point of this series, so we got 4 years left. Hopefully you can get one, as you can see. The Winnipeg Jets actually won it. Someone pointed out in the comments too. They won 12 straight games to do that. They reverse swept us in the second round before going on to sweep the conference final and Stanley Cup final. So good on the Jets. But I do think our team can, you know, get there this year. We got superstars on the team. We got depth. Really no holes. First line got the captain, Taylor Hall, who's actually gained the shock and awe X Factor. Playing with Sam Reinhardt, Miko Rantan, they get the plus five. You got the friend here on the second line with Stan Coven and Dreber. I saw you guys saying put Dreber on his natural left side. Cat on the third line there with Krebs and March. So March so even though he's only 82, popped off last year. He had 63 points, 82 games, playing third line. Fourth line here, you got Gundler, McGrody, Greg. This is McGrody's rookie season. Very good defensively, 90 awareness there. Shot block stick check could be better, but hopefully the D awareness makes up for that. Defensively here, we got Rensky, Weger on the top pair, getting a plus five. Glebov, Gerard on the second. Dursey, Levchinov on the bottom. Some of you guys saying I should trade Dersey. That way we can call it Matthew Schaefer next season. Looking really solid. Already 81 overall at 20 years old. Also, too, I should add, I think Rensky got the stick him up X Factor. I don't believe he had that last season. So that's right there. Solar starter. Dostal backing him up. Look at the power play for this team. Like, come on. Power play one. So, so stacked. I actually decided to put Dreber on power play one. Ranton is still the finisher. But I think Dreber getting those extra minutes should help him produce more. Power play two actually still gets a plus five. Now, in terms of the PK, again, our PK player aren't the best but I feel like you know they should be good enough chemistry wise could also be better but uh, I think the only one that's really terrible third three man there with a minus five but they should almost never see the ice now AHL team you got Rachevsky's in 81 on that first line even Hooten in there also in 81 so some players coming up like Porter Martone here's medium top six same with Poirier you look at the defense here of course already mentioned Schaefer but honestly Jack Thompson could eventually get called up to fill a spot like we got depth for sure goaltending even Saren is now an 80 medium starter there at 21 I feel like he could be a goalie for us. Probably ends up getting traded because, you know, Knight and Dossel aren't very old, but uh, still nice to have options. So before we get started here, guys, as always, I'll show you our ratings for this year. I saw the friend here there. 10 points in 7 games, I think it's pretty solid. I think I mentioned before, he could be our future captain. So we've got 100 offense, 95 defense, 87 goal tying. Let's see if that's good enough to win a Stanley Cup. Also, too, guys, look at the contract situation here. You can see we've only got 2.8 million in cap space, so not a ton to work with at the deadline. Rensky here needs a new deal. Wants extended. A little bit of a raise, 10.9. Not crazy. He's 30. I mean, could wait on him. Taylor Hall, we cannot extend because I think he just signed a one year. Noel Gundler here, we can also not extend just on a one year. Now, McGrody, we could. He was playing AHL, so yeah, we could get him very cheap. Only thing is, I'm not sure how he's going to produce. I'll probably go with the two year bridge, opposed to trying to get him really cheap on a four year. Under a million bucks, obviously, you can bury the entire thing. Levshinov hasn't been doing great. Wants 4.2 on a two. Actually, more expensive on a one year. I mean, if he's playing Bomb Pair again, I don't really see him commanding more than that, so we'll probably just wait on him as well. Dostal, we are allowed to extend 1.75 to be a solid backup. Let's see if we'll take like 1.6. Again, I think Rensky, we honestly just wait on, especially too. It's a lot of money, so like it gives us a bit more flexibility if we do wait. I think he's worth the money, but um, last year he only had like 55 points or something, so I don't think he's gonna ask for 11 million. We'll see. Dostal said yes to that contract extension. And so McGrody on the $2 million bridge deal. So I feel like both of those deals were solid value for us. Now at the end of summer here, guys, we're record of 22-13 and 1, which is pretty solid. Currently second place there in the division behind the Blues. AHL team, 23-9 and 4. They're crushing it. Uh, 50 points there, good for second. So it looks like their division is still very, very good. Dower Nielsen's actually our lead scorer, 43 and 36. NHL-wise, it's Dreamer over a point per game. So I guess putting him on that top power play was definitely the right move. And another trade deadline here, guys, the really solid record, 40, 21, and 2, so continuing to play well. And we're first in the division there with 82 points. AHL team, 38, 19, and 5. They're still second, though. The Rocket of 95, that is crazy. Um, let's see, Darren Nielsen, our leading score, almost a point per game, mostly assists. Ranch and our leading score in the NHL, just under point per game, so... Doesn't look like we'll be having anyone hit 100 points this year, but as long as we have a team success, I'm okay with it. Again, we're a buyer. We've pretty much been a buyer since the start of this thing. So we'll get to the trade deadline again. Even at 50%, we can only really bring in about $5 million for the salary cap. Wow, I did not realize that. Trevor Zegers never got a contract. 91 overall. The dude won the R. Ross Trophy like two years ago, and he went unsigned. That is a little uh, ridiculous, I would say. Kachuri behind him, Devin Tays, Faraby, you got Adrian Campe, Johnny Gaudreau, Dylan Strom, Verhage, Terry, and Tuck. I don't think any of these guys could really afford a side from Strom, who I guess would be like a really good third line center. So 
Maybe we could look into getting him. Actually, you know what, guys? Rather than trying to trade for Dylan Strome with another offensive player, I feel like we already have enough of those. And I'm instead trying to get JT Comfort here. He's much better defensively. One overall lower, but still produces 37 points. He's actually got the shutdown X Factor. Look at his defense stats there. Five stars. So basically trying to upgrade Peyton Krebs, who I'm giving back. Four years left at 2.5. Only has 21 points. Minus 10. Like, he's pretty good defensively, but I think Comfort's a lot better. If we do this trade, Comfort immediately becomes our 3C. Also offering a fifth round pick. I would like to extend Comfort as well if we're able to. So, see what the Coyotes say here. Trade's rejected. All right, I think it's pretty close. Like, at least it looks close to me. We'll try a fourth rounder. Still rejected, but it did say a bit off in value. So, at this point, all we probably have to do is make it a third or maybe even honestly, rather than giving up a third, we could probably just add a seventh here to the fourth. And there we go. So hopefully Comfort can uh, be a difference maker for us. Also, guys, regards to our goaltenders, a lot of people said they want me to trade Spencer Knight, but like he's just been so good. Look at this. 922 save percentage on the year. Like that's honestly so, so good. I'm usually just satisfied with above 900. Like 922 is amazing. And then even Dossel's the backup, 914. I think eventually Knight's gonna have a good playoff run for us. But I mean, if this year he's terrible again in the playoffs, I might have to trade him. But right now, I think he's playing way too well. All right, guys, so the trade deadline's now passed. We just made the one move there again. I think, you know, the team is pretty good. Just need to tweak it a little bit. Nothing crazy. Take a look here at the other trades. Hellison there to the Lightning. You got, I mean, Justin Falk to the Canucks, Burakovsky to the Stars, Nick Paul to the Coyotes, Fairberry there to the Sharks. See, Jake Pelche to the Bruins is pretty big. Montour to the Bruins as well. So they're kind of loading up. Jacob Truba there goes back to the Winnipeg Jets. Interesting. Romanov to the Golden Knights, Frost to the Avalanche, Taylor Radish to the Penguins, exchange for Marcus Peterson. And look at this Yanni Gord's on waivers, making 1.2 for one more year. And setting on overall, I was hoping he was at least an 80. Still has 80 AD awareness. The physical, though, is not there at all. I would potentially pick him up. Minus 13. Does he really give us anything? Probably not at 36. I'm going to decline. If he had a little bit better defensive stats, I think I would have actually added him. All right, guys. So after the trade deadline, here's an updated look at the team. Decided to switch it up a little bit. So I put Dreber on the first line. He's been playing really well with the power play, so might as well give him more minutes. It is three snipers at this point, but we'll see how it goes. Plus four chem. Second line's also got better chemistry now. Plus fourth Lafreniere, Stan Coben, and Hall. Hall I tried on the first line, but he actually wasn't really producing much, especially, you know, based on the minutes. So he's demoted. Cat and Comfort, Mark so the new third line. Hopefully they do well. Even the fourth line here, small change. We got Greg in the middle, McGrody on the left wing. We'll see if that helps it out. Defensively, I think it's the same. Although I did notice, just looking at their stats, Gerard here, playing second pair, playing second power play. He's got 15 points on the year, 20 minutes of ice time. I don't know how he's doing so poorly. I think the power play, though, is the same. As I mentioned, we picked up Comfort for the PK. He's on the first one there, again, a plus four. He's also on the first three, man. So hopefully, he can really help us out in that regard. All right, guys. So down the end of the season here, we have a record of 54, 26, and two. So another incredible season, to be honest. 110 points there, which is good for first in the division. I'm looking to see the Oilers beat us out for the President's Trophy by one point. I mean... It's still not a bad season. AHL, 54, 23, and 513. A second still to the Rocket, 124. Wow. So we're second in the league there, but also second in our division. The Rocket, it is that good. Uh, Rachevsky, about a point per game. I think he was a huge pickup for our AHL team. Ranton also just under point per game. Take a look and see what everyone else did on the team. Hopefully, you know, some other guys contributing. If Ranton is lean score at 80. Plus minus a zero is honestly a bit of a surprise for him. But Reinhardt 77, Dreber 76, Stan Coben put up 74. He honestly might just keep going up in rating again. Have an insane contract on him, 2.75 for four. I've heard people say that if you sign a guy to like a long-term cheap deal, he doesn't grow. But don't think that's the case. Lafreniere there, 72 is also really solid. Brensky, 59, almost 60 points to D-Man. We take that. Hall still finished with 53 points. March so close. Catton, 43. Okay, so overall can't complain. Let's see comfort stats with us. 4 and 19 definitely could have been better also too he was 87 dropped 86 but if i just want him for like the bottom six i'd still be looking to resign him spencer knight's final stats 921 save percentage had five shutouts on the year 259 goals against i think he has a chance to win the best of back to back years here ahl team Saren in 904 isn't too bad behind her chesky darren nielsen 75 pretty much all assists I'm just kind of curious. Schaefer is a guy we might call up next season. He had 38 points as a D-man, which isn't too bad. And now looking at the entire league here, guys, McDavid actually wins the out Ross. Only 107 points. So it looks like just lower scoring year across the board. Uh, yeah, what do you have? Only six guys there with 100 plus. Cole Eiserman, though, popping off for the Calgary Flames. Matthew Potra as well. Boston Bruins, 99 points. Jeez. Take a look at the goals. McKinnon winning Marisha Shari there with 61. Defensive scoring. Quinn Hughes, 95 points. Signed with the Oilers. Oh, my God. Imagine Quinn Hughes just... 
feeding the puck to McDavid, that would be OP. And they still have Evan Bouchard. They had the two high scoring defensemen both on their team. That just isn't even fair. Dry still looking really good there with the Philadelphia Flyers. And I'll hit goaltenders here. Stuart Skinner, the most wins, 47. I mean, Oilers did win the President's Trophy. I'm surprised he had so many more wins than Spencer Knight. I guess he just played more games. And that is the case. Skinner there, 74 games played. Knight only at 58, probably because Dossel's actually a pretty good backup. Oh my god. <laughs> Connor Hellebuck had 11 shutouts. Let me Google the record quick. All right, guys, never mind. He only had half of the record set by George Hainsworth, who had 22 shutouts back in 28 29. I mean, guys couldn't lift the puck off the ice back then, but he also probably wasn't even wearing a mask. So, you know, fair play to him. Now, looking at Saber Science here, guys, Spencer Knight did have the best of any starter, 9 2 1. In terms of goals against, the best of a starter was also Spencer Knight with a 2 5 9. So, I do think Knight here has a chance at a back to back Vesna. Guliev, most points of a rookie, 56, 22 years old, breaking in the league for the Avs. Minus one, a lot better than Riley Boychuk's minus 20. So, could see a defenseman actually win the Calder for the first time in a while. And in terms of the Saints here, guys, as I mentioned, we got second there to the Oilers. Although we actually had more wins this season than 54. They just had extra OT losses. That's kind of nuts. Nine teams with 100 plus points. Stars almost made it 10. They were one shy. Last place in the league, the Vancouver Canucks, 59 points. So after starting out very good, I mean, losing Quinn Hughes, obviously, is probably going to do that to you. Hurricanes first in goals 4 3 8 We actually weren't even at the top of the page. So maybe we'll address that this summer. Goals against here. We're actually the best. Okay, so Spencer Knight, even if he doesn't get the Vesna, should be winning the William Jennings. Now, in the first round of the playoffs, guys, we're actually playing the St. Louis Blues. Their first line is pretty stacked. Bruchnevich, Thomas, Kairu. They got Dvorsky there on the second line. Celebrini, forgot they got him. And Othman, Celebrini, only 87 at 21. But, I mean, he's been playing pretty good for them, as you guys can see there. He's actually coming off his best season. Third line, you got Stevenson with Snuggerud and Height on his wings. Fourth line, you got Neighbors, Bullduck, and Dean. In terms of the defense... All right, so not that great, kind of like real life, it's pretty average. Shea, Part, Bear, Wallander, Grizzlick, and Johansson. In terms of the goal tiny, they got Hofer and they got Daigle as the backup. So, I mean, they got some young players. I think our team, you know, is better overall, higher in talent as well as more depth, which is why we had 11 more wins. As always in the playoff simulation, anything can happen. First two games here at home, we get a 3-2 loss and a 4-1 win. So, I'll take 1-1, one one, head to St. Louis now. 5-4 OT win, 1-0 loss. So, it's all tied up. Game 5. Big win there, 5-2. to two. Just have to win one of these next two games. Please, EA. All right. Game 7. First round. St. Louis Blues. We need to find a way. And down 2-1 to one early. Celebrating Buchnevich, McGrody for us. 4-1. to one. What is going on? 4-1 to one's the final. We were so much better than this Blues team. That is... Just unbelievable. I don't, I don't even know. I'm just, I'm lost for words. Like, come on. AHL team luckily looks to have beat uh, the Bell of Senators in the first round. Now in the second, they're playing the Rocket. They're actually up 2-0. The Rocket are like the best AHL team of all time. And they swept the Rocket. Wow. So Oregon here trying to actually win back-to-back -back Calder Cups. They got the Hershey Bears next in the conference final. We actually have best of seven now. One and one there for the first two. And two and two. Okay. Have to win two of the next three. Game five, they win it. Can we move on to the Calder Cup final? We do. Wow, okay. So we got the San Jose Barracuda now in the Calder Cup final. First two games are at home. They're both losses. Let's not get swept here. And all right, we get one win. Can we pull this off? Probably not. And no, we unfortunately lose in the Calder Cup final there in five. But still, the fact AHL team made it back, I think it's pretty impressive. Rachesky had 15-18. Taylor Hall over point per game in the playoffs. So after having a pretty average regular season, he definitely showed up for us. I'm curious to see Spencer Knight's stats. Like, can we blame it on him? Stan Coburn ran over points per game. Like, what happened? Knight actually played pretty good. 9-1-8. So he's not getting traded. He had a good playoff. And just their team in front of him. I don't know. Something something happened. I Maybe we're just cursed. I don't know. And the playoffs now complete, guys. The Seattle crack in there actually won their first ever Stanley Cup. San Jose Barracuda, of course, won the Calder. So... Unfortunately for us, you know, not our name on that list, but I'm hoping soon it will be. Draft lottery there, Nashville jumping from 3-1, to one, Colorado from 11-2, to two, which is an insane jump for them, especially a team that's already, you know, pretty good even after losing Ranton. So I'll take a look at the awards next here, guys. Obviously, disappointing playoff for us. St. Louis immediately got knocked out in the second round after they beat us. Seattle Kraken beat the Sharks in five in the first round. Arizona in the second, Stars in the third, and the Sens in the Stanley Cup final. So... Three of the four teams they beat are currently bottom five in the NHL in real life right now. That's kind of funny to see. Awards here. Curious if we did get anything. Obviously, uh, no team awards there. Oilers just barely beat us up for the President's Trophy. McDavid, Art, Ross Trophy, and the Heart. 
Quinn Hughes, James Norris, again, what a signing. I guess they somehow had the money. Maybe like Evander Kane's retired at this point. Uh, also, Quinn Hughes got the Lady Bing. So literally just all Oilers so far. Guliev, though, did get the call there for Azure. I think it's pretty cool. Shane Wright, Con Smythe. Okay, so showing everybody he is definitely not a bust. Spencer Knight, again, wow. Back-to-back -back Vesna trophies. There's no way we can trade this guy. Like, he's making five and a half million. He's playing lights out. We just need a team in front of him. Also got the Liam Jennings there with Dostal. Silayev there, Bill Masterton. You got the Flyers coach, Jack Adams. Leo Carlson with a Selkie, interesting. McDavid also got the Ted Lindsay. And then McKinnon, of course, with the Marisha Shard. Now, looking at the AHL awards here, we're not going to get any team awards because we got second place in our division. Owen Beck, MVP. Rachevsky, most goals. Okay, so that's something. Looking through. Klingberg down the AHL is the best defenseman. Montembeau, best goalie. And he also had the lowest goals against, but unfortunately, just the one award for us. So, I'm thinking, guys, like, we're so close. We got a goalie, which often is, like, the hardest thing to get in this game. We got a start in Ranton, although I did notice he's dropped in rating from 96 to 95. Still, a 95 is pretty insane. I think if we just make the right moves this summer, we can hopefully be competing for a Stanley Cup next year. But first, you guys will take a look at retired players. Sidney Crosby calls it a career, 1892 and 1599. What a career. He also retired there with the Sharks. Still 82 overall, but it looks like they're playing on fourth line. Kopitar there is actually also with the Sharks, but the AHL team. That is kind of crazy. So it goes out with the Calder Cup, Jamie Benn, Victor Hedman, Tyler Sagan. Okay, so tons of guys. Couture, Everly, JVR, Drew Doughty, Ryan O'Reilly, Kuznetsov, Tarasenko. I mean, wow, Jonathan March. So I was thinking about maybe taking him back, maybe not. But he calls it quits. I think, you know, he had a pretty good career. Stanley Cup, Con Smythe, Alex Petrangelo there, Tori Krug, Tyson Berry, obviously former player of ours. Yanni Gord there after going on waivers says, you know what, I'm done. I mean, what a retirement class. Not only do you have sit at the top, but just a crazy amount of guys. Gold Titan here, Pabrowski, Freddie Anderson, Varlamov, Markstrom. Wow, yeah, so tons of guys retired this season. All right, guys, we're at the NHL entry draft. Curious to see who's available. Um, of course, it's like the first draft. I think there's no real players in it. Uh, you got an unknown guy first overall. Chances are he's medium elite. And you know what? I just realized I forgot to uh, turn up the draft pass quality, prospect quality to mediums. I seem to always do that, but uh, it's fair for every team, I guess. I'll make sure to do it for next season. Looking at the gems here, low elite, going to go, what, late third? That's pretty good. Medium starter goalie. I mean, honestly, you could probably get like a medium elite in the fifth round, so that's not even that crazy. This guy's a gem. I'm sure he's not a medium bomb six, but maybe we'll take a chance on him. Looking at guarantee potential. All right, so medium elites. This guy, there's a goalie. Going to go, like, what is that, third round. Good chance. Other than that, though, scouts really not seeing too much this year. Walter Frey's good chance to be low elite. Going to be, like, a seventh round pick. We'll definitely get him. And look at this, guys. I just noticed the Avs have the second overall pick on the block. I mean, I was thinking about trading Jersey, maybe even Gerard, since he's coming off, you know, not the greatest season, 26 points. Because of that, though, his value has dropped. Jersey's still worth a bit more there. I mean, he only had 13. He was playing less, but... We don't need both of them. We're potentially going to need some money for Renski. He's still got some value, but obviously needs to be re-signed. Uh, I think, let's see, Dursey does probably not get it done. Not even close. 28th overall pick. It sucks too. Like, we're always finishing high in the regular season, which means even though we're first round exit, our draft pick's always quite late. Tyler Patrice, we're going to have to take back just for the salary. And that still looks like the pick's on their side. Could add Olinov here, medium late goalie. Would Dursey, first round pick and him, get a second overall? Trades rejected. Okay, I kind of figured. And it was just a meme league guy went first overall, but he's 83 out of the draft. Dimitrikos, I mean, looks to be pretty nasty. Power four there with like an insane shot. All right, guys, so I decided to add really Greg to this trade. The Avalanche like him, and honestly, he'd probably still be fourth line for us next year. I think Noel Gunn will go up to the third line. 84 overall, I kind of feel bad at him playing there, but like, you look at his stats, physical solid, but the defensive stats are just not there for bomb six player. I'm thinking... If he can get us a second overall pick, you get some more ice time, it's a win-win. The value's on our side. We'll see what the Avs say to this. Trade is still rejected quite far off. I mean, last-ditch effort here. Do we really need a second rounder? Let's do a second rounder next year to try and balance out the picks a bit more. They say yes. I, know, I wasn't expecting the second to move it when they said we're quite far off. Okay, so this is the highest we've picked yet. Finally, like a team had a pick on the block. The Avs, of course, getting lucky, jumping up that much. Our scouts have Hedstrom here as the number one guy in the draft. Okay. Sean Couture, similar style, NHL ready. I mean, we could use a number one center. Like, for a long time, we've had, you know, Sam Reiner's more of a winger as our 1C. I'm just kind of curious. Karotz in here is similar to Bobby Hall. Couple X-Factors. This, this guy has no X-Factors we know of, but, I mean, we've got a lot of A scouts. Let's just trust him. Also, he's a scout-recommended guy. So, Stefan Hedstrom, they say he should be number one overall pick. 78 medium lead. I mean... So Dimitrikos guy looks to be a lot better. Let's see a look. 
Next guy here, Bygris, also 78. All right, so, so far we didn't mess up. Could have taken this Yen guy, though. Three overall higher, playmaker. All right, I mean, hopefully our guy ends up being the best. Number five is a medium talk, six. Let's see, does he have any X factors? He does not, but two way forward. Honestly, could be like the perfect 3C for us, say in a couple of years. It would just sign come for like one season. And so I just sent our next pick here, guys. We'll take a look at the rest of the first round. Did, oh, wow. Penguins crossed in 82 medium elite at seven. Those teams before definitely messed up. Very good shot there. I mean, we could have got him as well. Really, he's the second best player in the draft. They got him at seven. So good job done by them. Columbus there gets a 62 medium elite defenseman at 13. Um, Detroit got a highly goalie at 16 in Hensick. Jeez, you don't see those too often. So uh, there were some gems. I don't know how we like we got some good scouts. What, what, what am I paying these guys for? Uh, kid here could be medium top four. I think I'd rather take a chance on Jaden Mayer, who's probably mediumly goalie, taking him a little bit early. And he is medium elite, 67 overall as well, which is pretty high rated for goalie. I like that pick. Our next pick here, guys, is in the third round. Our only pinned guy is like a seventh round pick. So at this point, we're just trying things. Cole Shing time from Flint. I mean, I like his first name. Highest uh, ranked potential medium elite player. Let's take a chance, I guess. And a medium top nine. I mean, at this point, we are really just, you know, hoping for the best. All right, these next three guys, I just checked. All their NHL ETAs are five years. So we'll just go with the next, you know, highest rank from Saginaw. Cyrus Wright. He's a medium top six. All right, that's not bad at all. Only 49 overall, but uh, still, we take that for sure. And so we're now picking in the fifth round here. I'm thinking I'll take Koivu. And with our next two picks, we'll actually take this Prokorkin guy. who's a guaranteed low elite. I don't know how I actually missed him when I was doing the pins. And of course, I'll take Fraze with the last pick. So Koivu here is 55 medium seventh definitely could be better but not terrible so next year guys like i was saying we'll take uh i guess phrase is actually higher rank central scouting has him at 200 and he is a low elite 60 overall center grinder potentially you know future bomb six for us if he grows fast enough and on next year guys i'm offering them to know there's a couple of fringe starter goalies i'm not going to sign them even lounge who's got high fringe starter potential i just don't have the goalie spot we have that many you know good prospect goalies they say no i'll try throwing a seventh round pick next year as well and now they say yes. Okay, so, I mean, like I said, even though the high fringe starters should have some value, they literally do not have anything in this game. Last pick here, Ivan Prokorkin, guaranteed low elite. And he's a 55 overall, but still late 6th, almost 7th round. That is pretty solid. So, overall, pretty good draft. I would have liked if our second overall pick was NHL ready. But still, I do think he fills a need for us, which is a future 3C. And so, we're at the resign phase here, guys, with $27.5 million in cap space. But Zach Wrensky here needs a new deal. He's actually gone up in rating. Maybe we should have given him the $10 million he wanted. And yeah, he wants 11.3 now, so cost us a million bucks. Sometimes, you know, waiting works, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, let's see. Six years, if he would take, would he take like 10.5? Only cost us extra 500k at that point, and I think he was making like 9.2, so not a crazy increase. Glebov's now in 87, he'll want to raise next season. Taylor Hall's the captain, got to bring him back. Wow, 86 overall, we only asked for 3.45. That is team friendly. I'll offer like three and a quarter, see what he says. So saving a bunch of money there, which is nice. JT Comfort's all the way down to 84. I mean, we've got to look at his stats. He just dropped three overall. Um, Two-way forward, still pretty solid defensively. Jeez, no longer 90 d awareness though, which does kind of suck. He's asking for 3.3. I mean, I only want him for one year. Then we, the guy we just drafted could kind of take over. Let's see if we'll take one year, three million bucks. Now, Noel Gunner here, I'm actually thinking we'll take over March of those spots, third line wing. So... Kind of late, he's 26, got one year to do it. Um, if he does do well, do we think he's going to do good? That's the question. I mean, two point, if he does two and a quarter for three years, it's really not a terrible contract. And I actually got Tyler Bertuzzi's rights here just to make the trade work for the Avs. 33, honestly, I don't think we need to keep him. I was wondering about it, but probably not. Levshinov here wants 4.8, 82 overall. He hasn't really done much for us yet. One year, 2.8. I mean... If we're short on cash, if he's going to be playing bottom pair again, which I believe he will be, I can't really see him asking for much more. So if he's willing to give us a cheap one-year deal, we'll do it. And looking at our goalies here, guys. Spencer Knight's now 89 overall, so that's awesome to see. Saranen will be the AHL starter. Ball's going to be the AHL back at this point. It's 2076. That's going to be a really good AHL duo. Clang, I think, yeah, he's done growing. His potential's down, so we'll just let him go. You can see we still have Esler's high starter and Mayer, who we just drafted. Like, we've got so many good goalies in the system. Also, you guys, regards to Hedstrom here, we just drafted. We could sign him, immediately put him in the AHL, but honestly, I think I'll just send him back to Sweden and then give him a contract next year, have him uh, jump immediately to the NHL. All right, guys, so Taylor Hall here wants more money, which is fair. Same with Rensky. Uh, Comfort wants to test free agency. Levshinov, though, said yes to the one-year deal. 
I think the rest of this is all just AHL, which actually Gunther there just get by an accident, but he said yes to like the two and a quarter, which I think will be good if he's playing third line. Now I actually noticed Lafreniere is down to 86. So again, not the greatest production year for our team, but hopefully next year they can get back. I mean, Hall, I'll basically just give him what he's asking. I think that's actually super fair for 86. And for Rensky here, let's see if he'll take like 10, 7, 5. I'd like to keep it under 11. And there you go. Taylor Hall said yes. And Rensky. So at this point, we still have $12 million in cap space. In terms of the forward group, we could use like a couple fourth liners because uh, the guys we have, they're higher in the AHL, don't really fit that. Comfort here. I mean, we could let go, just see what's available in free agency rather than like tying ourselves to him. So at this point, we need a few bomb six forwards, but that's it, which I think is a pretty good spot to be in with $12 million in cap space. All right, guys, we're looking at the free agency class. Like I said, hopefully there's some, you know, things that'll help us out. Tarkvist there. He's the guy, of course, playing with Bedard, still an RFA, 95 overall. Eisman coming off a huge year, 91, probably actually going to go up in rating. Angren, there's an RFA. The top free agent is actually Dole Fairby, up to a 90. Same with Bowen Byram. Oh my goodness, 90 overall defenseman, only asking for 9-7. I kind of want to think about maybe making an offer here on Byram because you don't see a guy like him available that often. And then we could just go and trade Samuel Girard, which only costs us like 3 million bucks. Dylan Strom's asking for 9-9. Oh my goodness. Thomas Shabbat's available too. So could be like a backup option if we don't get Byram. Demonov, Michelli, Jacob Pelche up to 87. I don't think I've actually ever seen him grow this much. Looks to be like pretty good all around player. Take a look at goaltenders out of curiosity. Devin Levi there up to an 89. I'm not sure you guys watched my most recent video, but unfortunately he never got to an 89 for us. Uh, I was seeing how long it would take the current rookie class to win a Stanley Cup. Two-way goalies. All right, just two low starters, so nothing crazy. And looking at two-way skaters, Fabian Lysel was actually kind of a bust there for the Boston Bruins. Usually he's a bust when I trade for him, but I guess the Bruins also kind of ruined his uh, growth. Honestly, though, I'll take him for a one year, like 79 overall, medium top six. Uh, you might as well take that. The two low top sixes here. I mean, we have 38 contracts. I guess I could give him a try and just, you know, maybe one of them pans out. It's definitely worth like the million bucks in the AHL. And actually, Carson Lambo's here, 25 75. I think we could use an AHL defenseman, so I'll give him like a two year deal, League Min. And I'm signing a couple other AHL forwards here, guys. Just players I liked in juniors. Amadeus Lombardi, actually, Red Wings prospect, will do two years later, League Min. 25 79, high top nine. Could be good. Sam Maggio, captain of the Spitz. I'll give him like the same thing. Just try and fill out the HL team. We did lose some guys to, you know, tw being 27 and uh, no longer growing. Now, like I said, with this 12 million bucks, we want Byron for sure. After that, we need like fourth liners. So I want to see if there's just anyone that's like on a good deal. And Ty Delandria here, 85 overall, asking for 2.5. That would be a steal for him. 90 D awareness. Oh my gosh. He could just replace Comfort. He's younger. What? He's basically, he's actually better than Comfort is, asking for less money. I'm so glad I saw him. So let's see if he would do three years. It's basically the same. I'll offer him an extra 100K. Hopefully no one goes after him immediately. Right now, there are no other teams interested. Wow, guys, look at this. Barrett Hayden's available. 83 overall wants 2.7. Check out his stats, though. 90 D awareness, 92 stick check. Good face offs, really good shot block. He could be the ultimate fourth line center. So really trying to beef up that bottom six. I'll offer him 275, which kind of is a lot, but if he's also playing first PK, it's not the end of the world. So that'd be costing us about 5 million, which will leave us with seven. So I'm thinking we'll have to trade away Girard first to make sure that like all these guys, you know, can't accept our offers. And then we'll make an offer on Byram. Like I said, if we miss out on him, hopefully Shabbat's still there. All right, guys. Now next year, I'm trying to make a blockbuster trade happen with the St. Louis Blues. I honestly didn't expect to be in this position, but they got Pavel Bujanevich on the block. $9 million the next four years. Last season, he had 70 points. He's an 89 overall playmaker. I think he could be the perfect fit on the first line playing with Reinhardt and Rantanen. I'm also getting back Nicholas Haig kind of as an insurance option in case we don't get Bowen Byron. But if we do, I'll probably just flip him. Both those guys are on the block. Sending over Samuel Girard. Again, I think he is expendable. Six and a half million for the next five years and 84 is honestly not that great. Only gave us 26 points. And then with him is Alexi Lafreniere. I was talking about him potentially being future captain of this team. He's got the born leader X factor thing is last year was kind of meh if you look at the top six he's gonna be kind of the odd man out i feel like again ranton reinhardt buchnevich on the second line you'll have dreber hall stan coven when hall finally retires you'll have berkeley Catton taking his place in the top six who you know could be cheaper than lafreniere so i think it's a bold move i'm hoping it's the right move again lafreniere wasn't wearing a letter yet so i don't feel too bad about it but uh we have to try something here you know push us into that stanley cup conversation Value's pretty equal. Let's see what the St. Louis Blues say. Trades rejected. They said quite far off. I don't understand that when they're doing the uh, you know, actual bar there's pretty equal. I honestly don't need Nicholas Hag, but the reason I'm taking him back is because I have to for the salary cap to work out. So it's like we're kind of paying for a guy I don't even need, which is why, you know, if we do get Byron, I'll definitely 
try and flip him and get back whatever draft pick I'm about to add to make the trade happen. We do have a lot of goalies. They're actually interested in three of our goalies here. So Mary just drafted. Etzler there is basically like a worse version of Ball. So we could do him plus a second next year and a third this year. Try and do all that before you give a first round pick. And the Blues say yes. Okay, so massive trade. And like I said, I'm hoping it's the right one, especially too, if we can sign Bowen Byram, like we would just beef this team up so much this summer. And you really just realized, guys, we actually have to flip Nicholas Hag immediately because otherwise we can't sign Byram, Delandria, and Hayton all at once. And now Buffalo likes Hag. And to see if we can actually get back the second and the third round pick we just gave up for him. They say yes. Okay, so perfect. Basically just cost us like the one high starter goalie to push that trade through. Hopefully now the cap does work. It shows us at 14.7. Now you gotta remember that every player you sign is taking over for a million dollar player. So you can kind of like minus a million from your cap space. Go and buy them. Carolina and Arizona also interested. Wants three years. That's actually exactly how much time we've got left. I'll try overpaying by like 500K, 10.25. We'll see what happens here again. If he does say no, I'm hoping at least Shabbat is still available. Definitely, you know, making some big moves here. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did Nick Abruzzese get a $10 million contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs? What? He got up to 85 overall, which honestly, you know, fair play to him. But to sign him for 9.4, they gave Nick Robertson 9.8. What are some of these contracts? And they still have like Matthews, Martin, and Nylander all getting paid big money. All right, guys, so this Caden Sabrin guy slipped our offer. I think he was one of the low top sixes. Uh, Kostitz in there says yes, thinks the same thing. Ball for two thirds. I don't think that makes sense. Ball. Could end up being like a backup. Missed out on one of the scouts there. Again, always trying to like, you know, upgrade your scouts every summer. Take a look. If you've got a bunch of C's, try and add some B's. Barrett Hayden there said yes. Again, I think it'll be great for us. In the bottom six, Maggio Lombardi in the AHL. Same with Lambos. Lysel. Still need to hear back from Delandria. Hampus Lindholm getting offered to us. Honestly, not a huge give up in Hedstrom. I'm assuming... Or actually, sorry, Hedstrom. I thought that was a medium link goalie. No, that's the guy we just drafted. I'm not giving him up for uh, Hampus Lindholm. And look at that, guys. I was about to say, Wayne here back from Bowen Byam. He said yes. So I feel like him and Rensky top pair could be insane. Delandria said yes too. So it must have just worked out in terms of salary cap. Uh, got lucky there again because we did, of course, trade away our insurance option in Nicholas Hag. And yeah, we still have 1.7 million. I think we actually do need a fourth line forward still. So... I'm gonna go shopping around. And I think I found the perfect player for our fourth line, guys. Nicholas was available. He's a very versatile player. You can kind of play him anywhere in your lineup. You can see solid defensively, good physical, decent shot, decent skater. Right about the exact amount of money we have left. So I'm gonna offer one seven. I'll do a two year deal. And if he does say yes, I think our team's all set. And there we go, guys. Nicholas was said yes. So like I said, all we gotta do now is add the lines and should be good to go. Now, one thing that kind of sucks, guys, we got an offer sheet on one of my AHL players. I think he was like 72 low elite. Unfortunately, 1.2 million. We, apparently, we could not match. So Isaiah Jocelyn there going to the Penguins. And yeah, guys, as you can see, 23 years old, 74 overall, low elite. The one thing that, you know, it sucks about this game is when you're up against Starcat Max in the summer, it doesn't let you go 10% over like you can in real life. So you get kind of screwed in cases like this, but we had a very good summer, so I'm okay with it. And I got one more sign to do here, guys. We need an HL defense. We're gonna sign Sobolev here again. Another uh, Spitfire, so works out well. 25, 78. I'll give him a two-year deal. Just play like bottom pair for us in the HL. All right, guys. So that's our next season. I'll show what the team is looking like. Very excited for next year. I think this is probably the best team we've had yet. So again, first line there. You got Bucinavich with Reinhardt and Ranton. Hopefully that trade works out for us. They get a plus five chem boost. You got Dreber there on the second line. Stan Coven, Berkeley, Catton. Hall's actually on the third line now. Playing Delandria and Gundler. Fourth line here is Nicholas Waugh, Barrett Hayden, and Rucker McGrordy. So if you look at this. Very good defensively. McGrordy, 90 D awareness. Same with Hayton. While there, 86, plus good physically. Like, this should be one of the better fourth lines in hockey. Positive chemistry on every single line. Defensively, we are stacked. Rensky, Byram, top pair, 90-92. We got Glebov, Uyghur on the second pair, getting a plus five. This is Glebov's contract year, so hopefully he does well for us. You can see five-star defense. Bottom pairing, Laushinov's now at 84, plus Schaefer there's 81. He's very solid offensively, I think. Those two guys should do well in their limited ice time. Goaltending here, Spencer Knight's now at 89. Dawson backing up, 84 again. This team, I think, is looking pretty stacked. One thing I actually noticed, the only players we have left on this team from the expansion draft are the two goalies and Knight and Dostal, along with Taylor Hall. And that is it. We traded away Lafreniere and Gerard, of course, for Buchnevich. We also traded away Ridley Gregg and Peyton Krebs in separate deals. So, like, the entire defensive core is just players either we drafted or traded for, which is kind of crazy. Like, um, you know, so few players left from that original draft. And I'll look at the HL team here, guys. You got Fabian Lysa on the first line, playing with Preston and Rachevsky. Putin and Hillman, Poirier on the second, Lombardi captain, Mark Tone on the third, with Co. Dower Nielsen, Maggio on the fourth. Decided to just scratch Rempe for now because uh, a lot of guys higher rated. Defensively, a couple 80s top pair, Yermo, Lambos, Bowman, and Sabalov. Goaltending here, Serenin and Ball. So, I mean, overall, I think the AHL team, the reason why they can't get back to the Calder Cup final. 
And finally here, guys, looking at our ratings for next season. I just noticed two of our best players are former Avs, which is kind of funny. We've got 99 offense, so it actually went down slightly, but we have 96 defense. So that's up a lot. And 89 goal today, that's also up. So we're a more balanced team now. Hopefully that'll be like, you know, the difference maker to win our first Stanley Cup. If you guys enjoyed this one, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.